I am so excited. We are going to the biggest antique mall in the Vancouver, Canada area. I haven't been here in many years. It's in a great little town and I can't wait to show you, so let's go. Well, there is a jazz and art festival in Fort Langley this weekend. The jazz seems to be being played in front of the 1930s community hall, which is really cool and fun. I wish I could play it for you, but you know, monetization and all. As the birthplace of British Columbia, Fort Langley is a really cool thing to see. The Hudson's Bay Company needed a fort out here, and this is the beginning of English settlement. And it goes very well with antiques, and there are antiques in Fort Langley. One of the few antique malls left in the Lower Mainland is here. Country Lane Antiques, which has been here since the 1980s, is still here. Fort Langley today is a cute little town. It grew to a certain size, and then river traffic was no longer such a big thing up here. And that's great because it has stayed the way it is and now it is a really charming place. Two things keep antique malls alive, tourism and owning your own building. And Village Antiques Mall is one of just a handful of antique malls left in the Lower Mainland because it has managed to do both of those things. It's always very crowded as well. But I've found some fun things here in the past and some really pretty things and I'm excited to see what it's like after all these years away. We're still outside here. I'm curious what these plastic signs are going for up here. The equivalent of about $65. It seems like they're creeping up towards that in a lot of places. I've always liked these. They've got a couple of them. They are recipe trays and they're $22.50 each, which is about $15. Gosh, that's kind of tempting, depending on condition. I partly want to buy it just because I think it's nice they trust us to not steal things and come in and pay, so I think I will. Okay, so now when the big It's between bands, so it is really crowded in here. Canada being similar to the United States in so many ways means that you see things that are familiar and then you do a double take. So you have Simpsons stoneware, and that was done for them by Medicine Hat Potteries. I toured what's left of that factory in Medicine Hat, Alberta. They had a pretty good pottery business. $45 for the West End Hot Cold Keeper. You know, they really do sell, though. That's probably 30 bucks American, and that's about top price, but people love them, and I can see why. It's a great design. This looks like another piece of chalet glass because of the thickness. Ah, oh, and it's even signed, but it's also chipped, and one of their weaker colors, so we'll pass on that. Holt Howard Coat and Kitty. Love that stuff. Don't get sticker shock. That's like... 28 and 49 dollars respectively that's not that bad i really like carlton wears floral patterns this one's yellow buttercup it's just so sweet so colorful and it goes well with the joseph's frog from the 70s even though it's a generation or two older these are nice glasses from czechoslovakia sold by burks with the hand blowing and the black stems not expensive either pen delphin figures were popular in the 1990s made in england they are a resin composite. England did try to compete in that market for a while before giving it up to China. The Jaguar XKE is an older toy, it seems. Nope, I don't think so, actually. Let's see how the tin is stamped. Yeah, this is probably 1970s or 80s. Not as new as this. The die cast like this are something we associate with the 90s and newer. And if you were a posh little child, you might have had this friction drive Rolls Royce made in Japan in the 1950s. This will be the guidebook and retrospective to have about Expo 86 because it's the official one, 1095. It was a wonderful World's Fair. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad I got to go to one. Certainly stimulated my interest in the historic ones. I have a friend who collects Silvac ware made in England. I like the lustrous and variegated glaze. It's got a nice sticker on it too, so you know where it came from, although they're usually marked on the bottom as well. The Fenton Carnival Duck for 25 comes down to about 1750 US. That's a, not a bad price at all. This is fun. It's a TV lamp. It's a boat, but the fiberglass shade is awesome, and that's why they have about $50, and I would say it's worth every penny. I haven't seen this one before. It cuts a nice figure. This is a great apartment size piece, too, and with so many new condos in the area, I'm sure small is good, and English furniture especially is often small scale, but this one 
It's a very cute oak piece made in North America, probably around 1905, looking at the style. Pair that for size with this piece, which is American oak, and, but much larger in scale. Hello, everybody. <laughs> the English love their Yorkies, and that is a Cooper craft. Pretty similar to Beswick in terms of quality, but later in time. This is nice because it's a double wide mahogany stacking lawyer's case, and it's low enough that you could do display on the top like they have. I also like the lamps, especially this one with the lava glaze and that mint shade right out of the 70s. Vancouver was very modern in its mid-century as well. Priced as 175. They say as is, and I don't really see why, because I don't see any damage, but they may just be protecting themselves because it's an old appliance with a wire. Playboy energy drink, flavored with Viagra. I do love a lot of this stuff in this case. I'm a fan of cameras, and they've got some great selection, but, oh boy, prices on these are a little high for my blood. On the other hand, the Torquay Motto Wear seems to be priced in the normal ranges, around $15 to $30, depending on the piece. They do carry fine jewelry as well. They put these things away at night, of course. This is interesting in the middle of it, though, the Orthodox crown symbol. This has some silver in it and is from the early 1900s. This looks like a door knocker, but it actually was meant to hold a broom. And it's got a maker's name embossed on it. That's pretty neat. They want about $70, roughly American. Okay, all items sold as is. They're just saying that to protect themselves. That makes people maybe think that there's damage. Royal Dalton did what they needed to survive, and in the Depression era, they made hot water bottles out of crockery. So not all Royal Dalton is fancy, but it is all good quality. So glad to see a shadow lane. I haven't gotten to show you one before. I've described them because there's a lot of jewelry that qualifies as shadow lane, but this is what a sewing shadow lane looked like around 1900. You have a pin, you can wear it from your lapel, and then you have all of the instruments and implements you need at the bottom. A very neat piece, and they have it priced in American dollars at about 500. These are hand engraved, which isn't really done anymore. Now they have stencils and they sandblast, so these are older. They're cranberry over what appears to be clear with an amber wash, and I think they're very pretty with the mythological figures. We're seeing more interest in neoclassicism now. Silver bracelets, earrings, and necklace, all crystal from about 1940. Some of these can be rather valuable, and this is one of them. To see the whole set is unusual. Naturally, we're going to see lots of English cups and saucers for tea and English applied flower displays. Shelves and shelves full, around $15 each, and they seem to be in great condition. Ooh, I think that orange flower power is a Santa Anita wear from about 1970. That was not easy to get out, and I was hoping for a, it's been sitting in the back unnoticed dealer price. It'd be $22.50, but look at the big chip. I have a feeling somebody else was less gentle taking it out than I was. That's too bad. This is one of the last things they made. I wanted to write a book on this company, but I never got enough information. They were in L.A. in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. This place is definitely packed and always has been because, you know, you pay rent to access this much traffic and a tourist place that is going to turn over merchandise. Cute theme set with the dog on the chair for only $8 though. Chilly dainty blue china, that's another thing we definitely expect to find in Canada. Along with Royal Worcester Eversham and Port Marion Botanical. So all these things that are popular in the States are popular here too. I really like the studio art glass blue tumblers with the feet. But I have learned that in studio glass, people seem to want sculpture more than practical objects, so I haven't had as much luck selling these. I get asked about old oil lamps a lot. And with the clear ones, patterning has more to do with the value than anything. Now this has a new chimney, but this one is called eight panel with a starburst vase. This is pattern glass. So from the 1890s approximately, this is Greek key, of course, here. This one's turned a little bit lavender because it was left in the window for a long time and the magnanese turned color. Some people love that and some people avoid it. Peanut is the name of this pattern. This one has dates up to 1877. And here's another Greek key style. 
Now here's some fancier royal lamps. This one is called a composite, and that's where you have the buttons and bows. And then you also have a lower chamber. This one is opalescent. Cosmos, although that's losing its paint by consolidated glass in the back. And then this cranberry is a thumbprint. I don't think that's Fenton. I think it's before their time. Hey, speaking of a better mousetrap, there you go. The Victor Choker mousetrap from Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Appropriate, we would see Scottish sterling jewelry here. The one on the left is likely not sterling because the price is low. Yes, they say two are silver plate, and then you notice the price on the sterling is quite a bit more. A fun area to collect, especially if you have Scottish heritage or you happen to wear a kilt. These are German spring scales measuring in kilos. Now, they look a lot like buffalo scales in the United States, but of course, in the United States, they were done in pounds and ounces. And even here in Canada, the country was not on the metric system until 1974. So these must have come from Europe. Hairpoint Manufacturing was a very high quality name in its time. They did the collar box on the right where you would put your collar stays. Of course, men don't wear removable collars these days, but that was a way to keep your shirt going longer because the collar would get yellow and they didn't have whisks to take ring around the collar away. There's not a lot of room for furniture here, but there's a very pretty quarter-son table and a modified clover. And this oak press back high chair with the caning. It's also got the wheels. This may even be one that adjusted down to a lower level to be used as a strip stroller it looks like it is and i was just hearing a family talk about how they grew up with one of these and they were in their 30s so apparently the collectors of 30 years ago did leave an impression on their grandchildren here's the more craft i'm used to seeing hibiscus in the back from the late 1980s next to it is a great pool pottery base in fact a couple with really fun glazes the english had a lot of fun in the modern era too and I think Americans are not necessarily as hip to them as perhaps we should be. When you look at the prices, you know somebody is. I think I may want to see a couple of things in here. I really like the place lamp card placeholders when you would have bridge or whatever and you'd clip the person's name in it. But that's not what I'm really looking at. I'm looking at this paperweight, which is signed and looks interesting and modernist. And I'm looking at the art class maiden who I think is a pretty good deal at the equivalent of $15 from the 1930s. Now, she may be a lid for something, so I have to check that. Oh boy, this is tempting. It says the base is epoxied from under, so we'll have to see what that means. I think it means the horse is loose. That may be a problem. Hmm, it's been covered, so you can't really tell. I suppose if it stays on there, that's fine. I would want to know that this works, but it definitely is loose. Oh, it's been damaged. That's the reason why. Well, that's too bad because that did seem too good to be true at only $35. Atlantic Greyhound Lines. Is that in the Maritime Provinces? I've not heard of it as an American company. There's a Blue Mountain teapot. We think of them as decorative wear, but they did actually make functional pieces as well. Oh, this is from Fiji. Interesting made there as opposed to Florida. That's going to be about $21, which is about what it should be. Evangeline Pottery sort of copied Blue Mountain in a way with the splash designs, but they were not nearly as all over a splash. They just sort of splashed a little color on. Made in Canada. This one is priced at about $15. Kit Kat clocks came out the year my mother was born, and they're still making them, and they're still cool. I haven't found an old one in a while to show you the difference. At some point I will, but I think they're just so much fun. That certainly looks 70s, but a lot of things new like that look that way too. But most of the other stuff seems genuine. I'm just a little afraid to get it down. It really is tight in here. Well, it sure is. It's Schaunrich, West Germany. I'm pretty fearless, actually. I figured out what to do. Now I just have to figure out if I can spin it around and get the price. Well, it's priced over 100, so not for me. Prayer is a Czech beer. I have a really cool poster by them. Unfortunately, I just can't seem to sell it because it's not a well-known brand in the United States. And that is one thing I've noticed. I've bought some neat things, signs for Canadian stores and other places here, and then not been able to sell them for a big profit because 
they were not familiar to Americans. West Germany, now they're saying as found on everything. Again, I don't see any damage on this. I think the dealer's just being very, very cautious. It looks very similar to a piece I have that was made in Cuba. I just sold my giant sailfish by Blue Mountain in the green splash. This color from the 70s is scarcer. Childhood heroes, Bobby Orr was pretty amazing. 15 each on these flower power fins with the discount seems about right. And because there's lots of tourists, there are bottles and pinbacks and matchbooks and beer coasters and things you can just spend a whole lot of time going through, which is a good idea because there is definitely that bored person who came along who needs something to occupy them, but maybe they really like music and Billboard magazine catches their attention. Or maybe they like golf and sports, or maybe they think looking at pictures of old people is interesting. So a space like this is really useful in an antique mall. Plus they have some cool things like this Calgary pot bottle with the buffalo. This reminds me somewhat of that Mabina glass bottle from Malta that I had, but I don't see a signature. The way it's finished is a little concerning as far as age. It's really hard to tell with this lava. Price is around 55 for it, but they have another one, and that makes me a little more suspicious that maybe these are not very old, especially when you see the roughness of the way it's cast on the bottom. Corel has not gone unnoticed here either. Another nice oak piece from somewhere in North America, more likely New York than here in Canada, is this sideboard with the mirror from about 1910. Silver drawer, you can show a little of your china off. You have a display area with a mirror. You can put candles up to cast light. And then you have storage that you can put things like stacks of plates in that are not visible. A lot of people in the Northwest United States like neutral colors. A lot of people in Canada on the BC side seem to like bright colors. And this is a good example of a 1930s English chintz piece with very bright colors. It does not have its original bamboo handle anymore. Leighton Pottery was a company that did this pomegranate pattern around 1940. I'm listening to a young couple talk about how there's bells everywhere and they're counting them the way we count penguin hot cold keepers. Meanwhile, I'm looking at these really cute hippie sandals and purse. I remember my sister having things like this made for her in California back in the day. $160 now. Considering the hippies did everything on a shoestring, I bet they'd be really surprised to think that their stuff's worth a bunch of money. Here's more of that neutral effect, a lot of black and white. Paint by number clown. This is definitely a look. This is what Lander Street Vintage has been telling me in Seattle that a lot of people are doing these kind of looks. The menacing koala with the knife is an advertisement for Qantas Air in Australia, and all of that is so peculiar that I want it, but it's a little more than I'm willing to pay. Children playing in slow motion. I'm not sure what that's about, but it's on Masonite. It's from about 1940, and it's kind of fun. Local peanut butter. The bunny is cute. I have a feeling that this one is another English maker, but who is it? It's Bond. Rabbit Bond. Bond pottery. I am not sure if this is English or Canadian. I haven't seen this mark. There's the City Hall and Medicine hat. Oh, made by an English company, not by their local pottery. Very bad. That's how you get in trouble with your constituents. I've always liked this set. I've seen it in red background as well. It's got a nice luster. It's Beswick again, but with a very fun palm tree. And it's about $32.50 American. That's a pretty good price for it. Oh, a souvenir from Gassy Jack. A very old figure in the Gastown district of Vancouver. Wow, another chalet piece. That is tempting. Boy, they would look good together. I just got the basket at the flea market. We know this one's from the second half of their production era in the 70s and 80s. The sticker is not actually a chalet sticker. This one, interestingly enough, has the Chantilly signature. I have to have this. They also have the baskets in amber and orange again but I'm gonna stick with the basket I got because it's a little taller and more dramatic, but it's good to know that is here. If they're not selling here, well, I can take them south and we'll find a buyer. These, on the other hand, they have priced pretty fully at roughly 150 each, but they are very cool. Okay, now I'm just being stupid. I need to buy that other basket too. 
Another piece I find interesting is this. This is old milk glass from perhaps the 1880s or 90s. It's very thin hand blown, $15. It's an interesting piece holding the cornucopia in the hand. People do collect hands. We have a good light here to show you one of its best features, which is the way it glows opalescent. It also has some lettering on the bottom, which I can't quite make out, but I feel like I've seen this before back when we had dealers from Vancouver and Snohomish. I think this is an English mark. This town is unique in terms of one major attraction that brings people from all over Canada. It's an old Hudson's Bay Fort. There's one in Vancouver, Washington as well. I highly recommend taking the tour. This is a Canadian historical site, and as such, bilingualism is required. You're not allowed to fly a drone, so we'll show you an overview. This is essentially what the fort looked like. You can see the white building, which would have been the headquarters. What you see is a combination of original and reconstruction buildings. This is Sir James Douglas. He was the first governor of British Columbia and proclaimed it as a crown colony in 1858 here at Fort Langley because there was a big gold rush going on up this Fraser River and all of a sudden 10,000 people poured in. They show everything about fort life, including how blacksmiths worked and why they were so fundamental to being able to live out here. Everything from horseshoes to barrel hoops to hold your stuff together were made by the blacksmith. Actors do reenactments inside and tell the story of the various things that people did back then at the fort, and they take it very seriously. Which is why when they ask you from where you herald, Seattle barely registers because Seattle was a tiny little frontier town in 1858 as well. And Portland, Oregon might have been the same size as Fort Langley is now. A couple of blankets with points. Hudson Bay, of course, exported lots of furs to Europe, but blankets became a mainstay, and so did a lot of other really cool things, and it eventually became a big department store here in Canada. There is so much more to see at the fort, but I want to get back to antique shopping, so let's go back to where we were. I don't remember what this place used to be, but it has steps going up. It may have been an auction barn. I worked in an antique mall that used to be in an auction barn. Popular Royal Albert patterns. Heavy points and silver birch and the blossom pine and a lot of pretty different things. There is still an active market for this here. Starting to see younger people taking an interest in the States as well. But there is an Asian audience that has moved to Vancouver recently who like fancy house goods as well. So in this area, there's a chance that they will have sales of these things and when they sell they will sell multiple pieces at a time that's why this dealer has been here for gosh a few decades now to my knowledge it just goes to show you that what's popular in one place is not necessarily in the other and vice versa and there can be very good reasons for it and if you want to know more of those reasons well stick with me and we'll go places because i love taking you around on these journeys and if you'll just subscribe and then click that bell to be notified of future videos you won't miss a single one Bower pottery, the ring pattern from California. These are very clean. Price is starting about $20. They seem priced about right with what they are. Great color. Likely to have a lot of lead content. If that concerns you, then you may want to line them before use. I rather enjoy this English set of luster dishes with the Arabic design and the camel. It looks like it has the Minton mark if I'm reading it right. Next to it are two more of the Benswick vases with the palm tree. And this interesting textured piece is Royal Dalton from the earlier years. Even regular music had to seem psychedelic by the time the mid-60s were underway. So you have vibrations around the world with deep leader mouse vaults. Okay, I am just seeing so much fabulous orange glass here. This one has a chip and is big and is priced at 130 Canadian. And that's more in line with what I would expect to see. And that's why I'm putting these other ones up at the counter. Green Giant brands, that's very fun. You know, the Simpsons have been around long enough that some of their early stuff is actually old enough to be vintage now, even though they're still on television. And this is one of the reasons you have to be careful about how you define vintage, because you could say, well, they've been around 30 years. So everything that is the Simpsons on it is fine to sell, except most of it's not that old. Another really great pool pottery pattern. This is the Aegean bowl, and this is from the 1960s with the repeating bases. Quite an electric pattern. Royal commemoratives keep on trucking. Long as there's the world in which there's royalty, we will see more of these. There's Kate and William, Prince Henry of Wales. 
This one's a little more unusual by Hushan writer, Princess Anne and Captain Mark Phillips, because that was considered a more controversial thing. In the back here is a neat old bottle. This says it's a commemorative Australian wine bottle for the coronation of King George VI and Queen Elizabeth, and it shows the Dominion of Canada, as it was called at the time. The mark on the bottom is Emu Australian Wines. I wish I knew which company made that. If any of our Australian or New Zealand viewers know, leave a comment. Let's see what the story about the classic provincial shield signs is. They look like something from the 1960s or 70s in blow mold plastic. The company most famous to me is Britain's, but we do see Victoria trademark model soldiers. And then a whole lot of cat badges for various designations in his or her majesty's service over the years in Canada as well as the British Cameron's cap badge and various other pieces that I recognize only because the tags are helping me identify. I know there are people who collect British militaria just like there are American collectors of American military memorabilia. And there we go with some U.S. Air Force Missile Command pins, just as I say that. This is a very sweet Victorian portrait chair. You would lean gracefully over the arm and the rest would be against one of those studio backdrops that made it look like you were in some exotic place. Most of these are long gone, and wicker didn't hold up, so the fact this is in such good condition with a 1970s reupholstery job is fairly amazing. Love the old scale from about 1940. And they've got a bunch of phones here, but I still haven't seen any of the Northern Telecom two-tone phones that I like. Now, Labatt's beer was a little better known in the state, so that might sell on my side of the border as well. Cute little chalkware pieces and the dwarves. A lot of younger people are here today, and they keep saying, wow, it keeps going and going, and it sure does. There's a lot in here, actually. Nice selections of Pyrex here. It's good to see full sets. The Flamingo seems like it's a long way from home. It is from the 50s, and they're not cheap, but they do have Holt Howard Pixies. They're charging full price, but they're not easy to find these days. Really fun 50s dancer pairs in chalkware. Just the best colors. They are not inexpensive either, about $150 a piece. These are Ceramic Arts Studio, this pair here. Around $35 on the Lucite grapes. Now you can get rhinestone flatbacks and have these replaced if you know someone who's got them. It'd be worth doing because that is a very fun Siamese cat TV lamp from about 1960. Why did we pick them out in the first place? I don't know. More 1920s Egyptological. Cute vase. This one is made in Japan. Old English Majolica picture there. Robert Held is our recently retired glass blower from out on the islands in the Georgia Strait off of Vancouver. Those are very cute, and I did not know he did miniatures. This Lamanazov Russian piece has just stolen something, apparently. Pretty caithness face, the art glass up in the back, not a bad price on that. This would be something to think about in the future. It looks more contemporary, but it's La Margella, and it's signed. And I like the face in the porcelain. Lots of matchbox and other English cars. I really like the old dinky toys for Raleigh cycles. You used to see different cars in Canada sometimes than the U.S. Even American-made models would change the front ends or make it a little different for the Canadian market. Nowadays, cars are pretty much universal everywhere. Always like this guy, the Costa Boda Lion. He's pretty cool. This space definitely has the kitchen down. Well, Maybe my mom's kitchen. Oh, Jaja and Ava Gabor would have approved of this. Moroccan style with a flashing light underneath. How much more all that can you get? From the 60s, this one's, well, it's priced high, but I don't blame them. Where are you going to get one? Fun wall piece from the 70s back here. Priced at 35 that would almost be worth buying just to have as a backdrop. But I do have to bear in mind that there is a daily amount that you can purchase and otherwise it's subject to duty. So I've got to be careful not to go over my limit. There's also taxes and taxes in Canada are higher because they have the general sales tax as well as the provincial sales tax. So I have to be a little bit thoughtful about what I buy, but so far the prices have been great on what I've picked up. Someone has not given up hope. Wow good deal on the dinner plates. That's what you do. You get people started on the basic pieces and then they pay up for the serving pieces. It's what the China companies always did.
Love the spaghetti lamp. It's over 100, though, but I don't blame them. This is a lighting dealer. They've been here a long time, and they always get fun things, and they always stay current with the market. So you'll see a bunch of different things. I like the tie holder. That's a little different there. And the advertising mirror from BC Auto Towing. They have other things in the space, too, but I like starting at the top in this one because it really does have a lot of good ceiling fixtures as well as older electrified oil lamps. And then showcases, and there's some pretty things in there. Arte Murano is a pretty recent maker. Nice stuff, but not old. Not with that label, anyway. Kellogg Candlestick phone with the nickel finish at $199, which would be about $150 US, is a pretty good deal. Nice quarter sawn oak shelf from around 1900. This is Royal Winton's Marguerite chintz pattern if you liked more of a fall tone than a spring tone. Lots of brass. Very popular now. Most of that is 1970s made in India, but there's some good pieces and some large pieces. I took it in every nook and cranny. I just noticed this really great Santa cutout on Mace Night from sometime in the 1950s. Would have been a store display. I wonder if they have a price on this. A little more of a lodge look in this space. Nabob Tea. I just bought the coasters at the flea market for Nabob Tea. Green phones still haven't rented any two tones yet. Great old motorcycle hat. Oh, cool, we get to snoop. The staff member just came up and put holds on a bunch of stuff so we can see what people are thinking about. Someone's decorating with sports stuff, I think. 85 is about $60 American. This tells you that somebody's interested in these and willing to pay this price. 135 that's only 100 on those. That's a good deal. And around $50 American on the boxing gloves. And for about $75, the practice pads. This would have to be about four times as thick to get me to box. There's a lot of cute spaces like this, too, with a lot of 1920s prints and mottos. I like the tropical scene there. This motto about friendship is only about $14. Then there's this. This is a Wallace netting print. This is priced about $45. They also have a lot of fun toasters. The Chrome Westinghouse in the middle is kind of the fancy one. Pink Cat. Pick and Do. Made in Canada. I have not seen this before. I would have assumed it was Hager, but it is lighter weight. About $50 on the Cherub Mirror. That's a fair price. They really do have a lot of good things in here, and I can see why they're so busy. I've shown pieces of these in the chrome before. I have not shown copper. Look at that Art Deco design. It's not the Trilon and Perisphere, but it's very Art Deco. And I wonder what skyscraper that's trying to emulate. This is something that was made in the USA. So it is American streamlined design. The knob is sort of old fashioned for the rest of the style. It's very likable though, for around $50. And what's really neat about it is it's got the whistle and the kettle, so that is going to let you know when it's ready. Ah, Billie Holiday, one of my favorite singers. Some interesting First Nations beaded work. It's going to look rather similar to things we see from the Dakotas and Montana because of the interaction between the native tribes before there was an international border. High Karate warm-up kit. High Karate was very publicized, and I haven't heard of it in years now. I don't think it smelled great, but it was popular a visor for one of the last new Pontiac designs and one of the worst ever, unfortunately. It certainly didn't look like those automobiles of the future. Old cafe and airline things are definitely collectible, just like old train memorabilia. The pink plate, I believe, was used in LaGuardia Airport originally. The little man is a CPR advertisement back when CPR was still buying passengers as well as freight. Speaking of railroad, we've got the Union Pacific Railway Company, as well as the Milwaukee Road with the Traveler and the Canada Goose Adam 12. I thought that was very exciting when I was six. Ooh, and Mannix. My parents thought that was very exciting when I was six. My friend in Centralia who owns Tower Avenue Antiques said someone just came in and spent $300 and bought all her Nancy Drew, Hardy Boys, Happy Hollisters, all these related books. So there are definitely collectors again. Lots of hockey picks and baseball 
stuff, including Milwaukee Braves from Bazooka, back when that was not a politically incorrect image. This is a Portland Timbers cap from the 1970s when the rivalry between the Vancouver Whitecaps, Seattle Sounders, and Portland Timbers was the hottest ticket in professional soccer. It's still pretty popular up in this part of the country. Million radio, which is an early Japanese transistor, still works. And when they work, they're worth a little bit of money. Planet Junior Edger. This would have been something that would have been in the Farm Museum as well. More nabob, extract and paprika. Beckspear, now that's something that's known in the United States. And that would probably sell. It's only priced around $10. More nabob tea collectibles. Ah, the Grey Cup, the pinnacle event in the Canadian Football League every year. Hopefully the BC Lions will make it this year. They're doing pretty well so far. You see bobbleheads for the Stampeders and the Eskimos, but apparently somebody must have seen them as the rivals because they tore their heads off. A big coronation jug from the 1930s, God Save the King. That became a special rallying cry during the Second World War. It's more Robert Hill. He's a master of heaven. Wow, that was crowded, but it was fun. What a great visit. I found some really cool glass. I'm having a great time shopping in Canada. There's good antiques and vintage here, and it's fun to see some things that are sort of familiar and sort of not. I'm afraid we just missed Country Lane. I still haven't gotten into this store. Looks like they've got some cool repurposing, great stained glass, and I'm sure great decorative collectibles and antiques, and they've been here a long time, so they know what true antiques are. We'll just have to see them the next time we're here. It's a good excuse to come back. And it looks like they've got a vintage section in the back as well. Yes, this will be worth seeing when I get back here. Another cool heritage site. This is just a really sweet little town. There's the old depot. So many historic things to see in Fort Langley, and a lot of them are pretty interesting. But this is the real reason Fort Langley was here in the first place. Access to the river. Well, for my Cincinnati friends, I want you to see how they do cheese fries in Canada. This is poutine, and this is one of the nicest and least messy orders of it I've ever seen. What? along with a nice salad, so lunch is served. If you ever get to British Columbia, this is a place worth going out of your way to see. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.